Nah, I think we won't go there. Hmm, we already been down that road. Let's see, dictionary. Oh, that's maybe we should do a dictionary today. Huh, dictionary number two. Dictionary number three. Huh. Alrighty, here we go. We're gonna start out with this one. Let's start out with Noah Webster. American Dictionary of the English Language. Noah Webster, 1828. Yeah, I got lucky to get this one. Yeah, I'm very happy to have it too. There's quite a few of them around. You can get them for like $25 to $350 on eBay. It's good to have. The reason it's so good to have because, as you will see here in a few seconds, shit has changed. All right, let's continue the march here. Let's see what we got here. We got to start off with this one right here since there seems to be a lot of controversy going on around us. This word right here. We're going to start off with this word Africa. Africa. It was one of the four quarters of the largest division of the globe. A continent separated from Europe by the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, all those pretty enough. But at that time, they, the globe was divided into four quarters, and Africa was the biggest quarter. Why do we have to go to seven continents now? This is back in the 1800s. I think they hadn't already uh, discovered most of this place, but why did they turn it into seven? See, something's going on here. We read stuff if we don't just think about what we're reading and, and and stop trying to give excuses for for the hijacks. Most of us would have read this and said, one of the four quarters of the largest division of the globe. Oh, back then they just didn't know it all. No, 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 no. Think about this. This is back in the 1800s. There are people. One more time. Four to seven was changed for a reason. Just like when they took uh, Israel out of Africa and made it the Middle East. The same way they're trying, believe it or not, they're trying to take Egypt out of Africa. Okay, moving on. Let's move on to the next one. What else we got in this thing? Uh, ah, this is interesting. This is <laughs> working with the word black. Check it out. Let's see if I can get this thing to hold straight. I'm having to hold this camera in my hand because I found a better way to record rather than having to import after recording from the iPhone. All right, black, black, pale, wan, livid, blaken, blaken, to become pale, to turn white, to turn white, to become black, to blacken, blake, ink, back up. How in the hell is it black is to be turned white? All right, this, I told y'all, this English language is a lot of spells, and this is a spell they're working on our ass right now. We're gonna have to, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. Okay, right. All right, let's continue to march. Um, bleak, pale, wan, livid, bleak, ink, bleaker, to insulate, to be exposed to sun, or to bleach. Now, all you black people out here, so-called black people, bleaching your skin, as you bleach your skin, you become black, you dumbass. Again, to be exposed to sun or to bleach. Also to lighten. That's what black meant. That's what it meant. Is that what it is? Y'all you heard I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. Is that part of the game? To make y'all think you're black, black, and then we made yeah, I was living it too. I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. Then when you find out that uh, all these other definitions of black, especially when you go into a law dictionary, you find out black has no standings in law. And again, I say, has no standings in law. You need to check that out. Got another video on it. Anyway, let's continue to move. Oh, bleaking to bleach. <laughs> to bleach is black. When I put bleach on my white clothes upstairs, I, I try to make them more the color white. All right, bleak, ink, black, pale, wan, bleak, shallow, bleacher, to bleach, to bleach. 
It is remarkable that black, bleak, and bleach are all radically one word. The primary sense seems to be pale, wan, or shallow, for which has preceded it the present variety of signification. That's what black was back in those days. Right? Let's go to this here word that everybody seemed to love. They're going to love this here probably in a, in a few more months. Right now, with the end, of, with the beginning of December, they're gonna love this here word in, a, in about three more months. Okay, let's see what they're gonna love. Accents, Easter. The Germans would still have it. Orsten, uh, supposed to be from Orster, the goddess of love, or Venus of the North, in the north of whom a festival was celebrated by pagan ancestors, or by our, okay, by their pagan ancestors in April. Now, you still want to hold on to Easter? This is what it was. This is what it was and what it still is. You can, you can try to say, well, we just doing this here to be with family. Yes, yeah, uh, 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 which their pagan ancestors celebrated in, East, in April. Once this month was called East, uh, Ostermont, or Ostermonat. That, that sounds more German. E-O-S-T-E-R, Ostermonat. Okay, Easter is supposed by Beta and others to be Astarte of the Sidonians. Y'all people need to research what you follow in and what you believe in. Man, boy, I tell you. Anyway, I'm not going to uh, continue on. We're going to move on to the next word. I will say again, your ass need to research before you start to follow shit. And why would this word be in the Bible? I mean, you know, this word from a Bible uh, and from some old old books in old literature be in this dictionary if it had no truth in it. The word we have here is the word firmament. Okay, now check out what they call the firmament. The region of the air, the sky or heavens. In scripture, the word denotes an expanse, a wide extent. For such is the signification of the Hebrew word, coinciding with region, I mean, regio, region and reach the original therefore does not convey the same of solitude but the stretching extension the great arc or or expanse over our heads this is what they were saying then man i'm telling you, you better get these old books you start to find these hijacks and when you read them and you listen to what you read you pay attention to what he is not trying to tell you let's go again the great arc or expanse over our heads in which are placed the atmosphere and the clouds. It didn't say under your feet. Uh, we've all been tricked, that's all it is. In which are placed the atmosphere and the clouds and in which the stars appears to be placed and are really seen. Over your head. This is why when I go to a damn beach, I'm here in Florida. I look across the Gulf of Mexico, then I drive across over there on the east coast of Florida, and I look across the Atlantic, and I cannot see stars until I look up or take my telescope up or either my Nikon P900, all of these three items, up 37 and a half degrees and higher. If I'm on a ball of water looking across a huge, huge mass of water, I should be able to look off of it. I shouldn't have to look up to see stars. Okay, and you can see right there. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the, wa divide the waters from the waters. We need to pay attention. The truth is right in front of us, but we choose not to see it. We choose to listen to what another man is saying. That's why I don't have you to listen to what I'm saying. I try to read in front of you. I grab what they have written so you can read as I speak it. There's no lies coming out of me. All right, let's continue to march here. We're gay. First definition of the word gay back then was merry, airy, jovial, sportive, frolicsome. It denotes more life and animation than, uh, than cheerful. Let me smile and the world was gay. Next word definition. Fine. Showy as a gay dress. Let's get on down to the last one. 
Number three, inflamed or merry with liquor. Now, I would imagine this is where they actually got you, you, you people thinking that what, what gay is, because this is what happens when a lot of people get uh, full of liquor and they got that little, that little sodomite in them. They become this one. Inflamed or merry with liquor, intoxicated, a vulgar use of the word in America. This is what they tried to make the word gay into. They tried to make the gay into the, the word gay into something vulgar. And they did. Not just try it. They did because the whole world went for it. Because I remember when I was uh, back in the, the mid-70s, I used to use the word about, yeah, I was I, I was uh, jolly and gay. Who that sounds nasty saying that shit now. Whoo! No, I never was that. I'm I don't have no booty duty. No, do I have it uh, practice upon me. All right, moving around, medic. Now, like you got some folks right here, and please do not think I am a, a racist on this here. I'm just gonna tell you what it means, okay? The word Semitic. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest with you. And I'm not trying to uh, do a hit on any type of people on this thing. All right, let's go here. Just telling the truth. The word Semitic, it says, pertaining to Shem, the son of Noah. Semitic languages or Chaldees, hmm, okay, that sounds like over in that region. Syriac, hmm, definitely still over in that region. Arabic, hmm, definitely still over in that region. Hebrew, which is something I'm not real sure of anymore because if somebody's trying to create something new. Uh, Samaritan, definitely still over in that region. Ethiopic, wait a minute. This is what they called Africa. And old Phoenician, still in that area. Wait a minute, wait, can I, I don't see it. Do you see European? Wait a minute, they forgot to put European in this damn book. Anyway, no, they didn't. Um, they put European in that land. What, it's about 70? Just around 70 years ago? That's what they did. This is no hit on the people who are there. Your forefathers has provided you an inheritance of lies. Don't believe me? Read that book you call the Bible. It tells you there. All right, this word right here goes along with that gay word, but this is what they did and they took gay and they turned it into this. Sodomite, an inhabitant of Sodom. Now, if you practice this here, that's your own business. I do not participate in it, partake in it, but I am not your judge and I'm not your God. However, I do have my own opinions and this book. I didn't write this damn thing. Anyway, let's continue tomorrow. Sodomite, an inhabitant of Sodom. Now check out number two. If sodomy was good, then they wouldn't wrote this. It says, one guilty of sodomy. <laughs> guilty. Guilty sounds like a crime. Let's go further. Sodomy, a crime against nature if you're practicing in that and you think you are believing in what you call the Bible I call it the Bible in some other words it's a crime and if you're doing any crimes against nature why are you practicing with the Bible makes no sense some of you guys who already know what's going on here you know what I'm getting ready to do you already know the deal but I'm not going to give you but one word out of here and I'm going to keep moving. Uh, this is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. All right. This is a compact version of the Bible of the Zondervans. And let's see what it says right here. When we look up the word ham, because, you know, people have always told me when I was growing up as I was a uh, Hamite and I'm the curse of ham. All right. Ham. It says uh, ham, perhaps hot. Okay. And number one, it says the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Not the Negro. Pause, pause, pause. I thought all the dark races was the same. That's what they kind of told you, sorry. Right? Okay, let's continue to march here. Not the Negroes, but the Egyptians. Again, you already know the Egyptians are from the dark races because all they're talking about here is are dark races. So if the Egyptians was known as the dark races in this book, 
Why in the hell is everybody trying to say that they were white? I know the answer, but not on this video. All right. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negro, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Now, as far as Canaanites, somebody was trying to say that we're Canaanites and all that stuff. You have to look at the fact. The fact is, Canaanites are from the dark races. However, there's a way of finding out who the Canaanites are. Another video. It is not who you might think they are. Anyway, continue to march. Bam. But we have to think about this here. Anything that is said nice should be said twice. Let's see what I can find out again. This book right here goes a little deeper. This is the Zondervan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Let's see what we got here. And we're going to look up the same word, again, the same word, because we want to make sure of what was going on. Now, this, uh, trust me, these books have a lot more information in it. Oh, my goodness. It will, it will, it will curl your wig. Let's go. Ham. Okay, here we go. Ham. I showed this. This one I showed on one other video. But we're going to show it again here. Let's see if they say the same thing. They say the same thing. Ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood. He became one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Now, this book's a lot newer than this book. We don't need to see that. We see that this book is a lot newer. All right, we're going to go back to this book, which is the one I just showed you. Same thing. No tricks. Moving back. Turning in the same pages, going on back, going on back. We're still in the same book, no tricks. This book was published in 1963. Now, what was said in 1963 is still being said 2018, 2019, 2020. It's still being said the same thing. So somebody knows what they're talking about, and some don't. Again, this is the Zondervan's. Let me show it to you. The Zondervan's. Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Mary C. Tenney. You need to look it up. There it is. All right. 